working from home day looks like for me as a UX designer. I'm really gonna get into the details here. But when I'm at home, it's all cozy, cozy, cozy. Hi. And I'm telling you, do not kick it until you try it. All right, so it is midday and I'm hungry. And the eggs. Okay, so don't laugh at me, but I've done a couple more sketches. Um, you can see here I've done quite a lot of prompting. For the final design here, I'll show you. Good morning friends and welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Anna. I am a UX designer and a mother and I live and work in New York City with my son, my husband and my little puppy who's, you can just see right there. <laughs> So welcome to a regular Tuesday in my life. In this video, I'm going to be taking you along on what a working from home day looks like for me as a UX designer. I'm really going to get into the details here so you can see exactly how I make my working from home days as productive as possible. And I'm also going to be talking to you about how I weave AI into my workflows to increase my productivity and just make my work more enjoyable and effective. So today is Tuesday. So I have my regular product meeting with the my CEO, basically. We are a pretty small organization, so he likes to be involved in the product design process. So I've got a meeting with him. I've also got a meeting with my engineer and my product manager. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to have my focus time. And this is the time that I need as a designer to put pen to paper and actually produce. <laughs> because sometimes I think you can get into an overwhelming spiral of talking about things and having a lot of meetings. But as designers, it's our responsibility to actually produce results. And so it's really important that I have some of my calendar dedicated to just design work. So what I also like to do at the start of the day is I make a list of all of my priorities and my big priorities today are going to be finishing off the plan for my usability testing and I also need to just continue working on the prototype so that it's actually ready for when I recruit my testers um, to test on it. Okay, I do have a couple more minutes before my meeting and something that I want to talk about is how I make working from home as enjoyable as possible. I work a hybrid environment, so I work a couple of days from home and then a couple of days in the office, and honestly, I love it. When I go into the office, I like to dress up and like lean into my love of fashion, but when I'm at home, it's all cozy, cozy, cozy. I put my cozy clothes on, I put my air conditioner on if it's in the summer, if it's in the winter, I like to open a window, I like to have my lamp, I like to have candles, I like to go makeup free, I like to have my cup of tea, anything to increase the kind of like hooginess of the day just adds such a juxtaposition to my week, makes it so interesting for me and I feel like I just do my best work when I'm in this mode. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Good afternoon. Hello. Wow. Okay. It is 1030. I've just finished all of my meetings for the morning and they went really well. However, had a little bit of a pivot as far as the project timeline. Um, I was about to launch into usability testing, but we've decided based on some feedback from the engineering team that I'm actually just going to be focusing on doing some mobile designs 
Something that I've really loved about this year is leveraging Figma Make as a tool for my design process. Um, it is the like, prompt engineering or prompt to design tool that Figma released earlier this year. And it is amazing. I have to say it's completely transformed the way that I work um, and the capacity that I have to build and my efficiency. And so I'm going to show you how I do that. But I'm definitely like in the explorative phases too. So this is me just kind of like working out how I can leverage this feature as best I can for my workflow. So I'm going to show you that. But first, I actually haven't eaten anything this morning and I'm dying to make a smoothie. So let's go do that. Right, so this is a pretty colorful, interesting smoothie, but you just have to stay with me, hear me out and then try it for yourself because it is so good and, and so good for you. So I'm starting off with a pretty inoffensive mix of tropical fruit, protein powder, of course. I'm doing it on almond milk, but you could also do it on coconut milk. Um, and then this is where I'm gonna start losing you. We have cauliflower, lemon, ginger, what? Spirulina, <laughs> creatine, and collagen powder. Let's go. And I'm telling you, do not kick it until you try it because this is delicious. I know it doesn't look good, but you just have to trust me. It's so, so, so yummy. And, um, you know, smart girls are healthy girls. Gotta get our vitamin C to work hard all day. <laughs> so one of the hardest parts of being a designer for me is that initial breaking ground of getting started on a particular concept that's in my mind but needs to come out on paper or onto the computer. And there's three things that I do to help me with this. The first is pen and paper. So just like sketching out initial ideas, knowing what needs to go on the screen and just kind of roughly placing them where they are. Some people call this like crazy eight. Some people call this like rough wireframing. For me, it's just about kind of getting everything in my brain onto a piece of paper. The second thing is competitive analysis, basically snooping on what other people. The third is Figma Make. Figma Make has been so helpful for me. It is the prompt design engineering tool that Figma released this year. And basically you use natural language to prompt it to help you create a design. Um, so I'm gonna do all three of those things and I'm gonna show you the end result of all three uh, so you can see kind of where I'm going with this. So when I'm doing some competitive research, okay, snooping on our competitors, I like to do it on my computer so that I can dump everything into FigJam. Um, but I just use the inspect tool by like the right click when you're on a browser and go down to the bottom and then you can view the mobile version of it or like the mobile size of it. And then I just kind of like screenshot all of their experiences. And I do that for a couple so I can kind of like compare and contrast and then See who's doing what well, basically. Another tip is always start with the most challenging part of a design and get it over with first. I feel like that we can procrastinate and avoid and design around what is the real challenge and just kind of do busy work. So I like to go head in with the most challenging design and once I've got that fixed, everything can just like flow smoothly from there. Okay, well, it's been two hours and I've been working on this particular problem of transforming my desktop experience into mobile. Okay, so don't laugh at me, but I've done a couple more sketches. This is literally, I know it's so rudimentary, but honestly, even just putting something to paper to kind of give an idea of like what it'll look like is my first step. And I find it really helpful in brainstorming like my vision that's in my head. So that is step one. Okay, so here is my Figma make. Um, you can see here I've done quite a lot of prompting, gone backwards and forth quite a lot. One of the key rules with uh, make is that you don't give it too much information at once. You have to kind of drip feed it um, recommendations and suggestions, particularly in the areas that you want to. But you can see based on um, the sketch that I had, this is quite similar. Um, I think it's improved it actually in having these tabs up here for like the three main areas. 
Um, so I'm really happy with that. But look, this is just a first pass. I think that a lot of it still looks really um, crowded and clunky, but now I can see the improvements I have to make. So I'm just gonna keep on improving this. And by the end of the day, it's going to be even better. I just love it. It's so great to be able to iterate so quickly and have something on pen and paper to help you bring your designs and ideas to life um, in such a real like clickable interactive way all right so it is midday and i'm hungry and i have to take something to the tailor so i'm gonna head out um i usually make food at home but hmm, i might grab something on the way out let's see let's go Delicious lunch, gorgeous candle, watching my favourite creators on YouTube. Chef's kiss. Right, so I am back at my desk after lunch and I'm just going to try and get as much done as I possibly can on this design because I feel like I've got momentum and that, my friend, is a positive, positive thing. So I'm just going to get into it and then at the end of the day I'll show you what I've got and you can see how far I've come with it. Hello, so it is coming to five o'clock and I'm gonna log off but I want to show you the final result of my day's work. I started with this like god-awful dodgy sketch right here. <laughs> And then I used make to uh, work on a couple of different iterations and then I finally ended up with this is the final design here I'll show you I'm really happy with it I think that yeah it's just amazing how quickly you can go from zero to one um, with the help of AI now which is just I mean I don't know I feel like it increases my efficacy and um, how quickly I can do things but I want to hear if you think it does, um, how you're using it, and then also too if you have any other kind of like questions or want me to make any any videos on anything else. I always love hearing from you, so put it in a comment and I will definitely get back to you and I'll see you next time. Bye!